The stockholders' equity section of the balance sheet is a little tricky for some people to understand. I mean, you get used to seeing things like uh, in the liability section, just accounts payable, you know, it's $100. Uh, you get salaries, wages payable is $200. And then all of a sudden you get to the stockholders' equity section and you see something like this. You see common stock or preferred stock. You see a, a, a par value. You're wondering what that is. Shares authorized, issues outstanding. And, and as you've got a base, basically a bunch of words and all these things that you know ba uh, make it a little bit more complicated than than what you see on the right, which is just a number. Which and you're wondering maybe how do they get that 200, uh, and, and what do all these words over here mean? So basically, this is the capital stock uh, section of the balance sheet. And for a lot of firms, that you could just go ahead and call it the common stock section because some firms don't have preferred stock or anything like that, but. Uh, more generally, we just refer to it as capital stock, and it's basically how the firm uh, gets financing. When we think of things like, an, uh, let's say you hear about a firm uh, having an IPO or something like that, they're basically uh, raising money for the firm by issuing shares. They're issuing shares of stock in their firm, and so this is the section where we're accounting for that. And so the firm has to disclose certain types of things, uh, one of which is the par value, another which is the number of shares that have been authorized. And what does that mean? Well, the, the firm has a board of directors, and the board of directors votes to say, okay, how many shares are we going to authorize in this in this uh, offering of stock to the public? And in this case, well, it was 100,000. So there are 100,000 shares that the board of directors has authorized. However, that's different from the amount of shares issued and outstanding. And, and here's why. Just because the board said, hey, theoretically we can issue up to 100,000 shares, they've only actually issued 20,000. Now they reserve the right to issue that additional 80,000, that, that difference between these two. They can do that down the road, but they haven't done that right now. Right now, the amount of shares issued uh, is has been twenty thousand, and and in this case, actually, also there's twenty thousand outstanding. And you might say, well, why is that different, or potentially different? Here, it's the same, but why could that be different? Why, if they issued twenty thousand, would there not just automatically be twenty thousand shares outstanding and in the public? Well, that's because the firm can buy back shares, uh, which is called treasury stock. The firm can go and and actually have a stock buyback and buy some of those shares that were issued. And, and, and just, just hold on to them and then maybe reissue them later or give them to employees or, 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 or a number of things. So in any event, the amount of shares authorized, issued, and outstanding, uh, you can actually have three different numbers. Uh, so basically, uh, when we talk about, about the par value, uh, what we want to drill down is, is focus here in this problem on these 20,000, right? We're not concerned uh, with the amount that we're authorized, that, that hasn't been issued, they're not outstanding. Uh, we want to say, okay, well, this, this par value. And this, so now we say, okay, well, what does this par value even mean? Well, and, uh, uh, theoretically, in the old days, uh, it was like kind of a value that being, you, you get a, let's just draw here, you'd have a little certificate of stock. Right now, it doesn't necessarily work that way. People can buy stock online and never even have a piece of paper. But you have this certificate of stock in this company, let's say Coca-Cola, and there would be a value on here, that par value, and, and theoretically that value is the amount that you could go to the company at any time and say, look, I have this this par value here and I, I demand that amount of money uh, for, for my stock. Now, realistically, stock prices fluctuate up and down, and we have no idea where the stock price is going to be six months from a year, year from now. We don't, Coca-Cola doesn't know what its shares are going to be worth. So what they do nowadays is they just put a par value that's really, really low. Like in this case, one penny uh, per share. And sometimes it'll be like one one hundredth of a penny per share. Really, really low par value uh, because it, it, it doesn't really matter. It's just kind of this archaic uh, tradition or, or what have you. And so the par value is, is deliberately set really low. And you basically just, just in this case, we take that 20,000 and multiply it by the one cent uh, par value per share, and that's going to give us 200. And 200 would what the firm would have under its common stock. And if you think of, think of a journal entry, so they're raising money, 
they would have a credit so they'd have they'd have a cash amount obviously they de they're debiting cash for some amount okay when they get that's the actual money they get from the people who buy their stock and then there's going to be a credit to common stock for that 200 and then now you might be wondering okay but the firm is going to get more than one cent per per share when they go ahead and actually issue the stock right maybe they get thirty five dollars a share well in that case that's where we're going to have this 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 to make this entry here balance right so let's say that let's say this cash was 800 for example well we've got this 600 here and we're wondering well what is that well to make that entry balance we're going to have a thing called additional paid in capital uh, just abbreviate APIC and that's actually going to make the this entry balance and that's APIC is going to be a lot bigger than the common stock typically on that on that shareholders equity section of the balance sheet because again this is deliberately set low it's just the put representing the par value maybe the same you, you do the preferred stock the exact same way you'd have a cash and then preferred stock. so so in any event and, and that's kind of explains you know kind of the rationale for why we have uh, this common stock and, and what it is and in the next video we're gonna go through an actual example and calculate uh, how you would go about um, doing the journal entry and everything in, in a case where you have significant additional paid in capital and talk about